I'm creating a build for every exotic armor piece in Destiny 2. This time I'm covering all 40 Warlock exotics. Like the last video, I'll rank each of these builds on a scale of 1 to 5, however these are quite loose rankings, so take them with a grain of salt. Also like the last video, I haven't included mods for the simple reason of, it would take a few centuries. Skull of Dire Ahamkara. We're using Void. Aspects are Feed the Void and Child of the Old Gods. Fragments are Vigilance, Reprisal, Persistence and Instability. Nova Bomb kills Grant Super Energy. Get kills when surrounded by enemies for increased super regen. You also gain more damage resistance during the two seconds it takes you to throw your Nova Bomb. Crown of Tempests, Arc, Electrostatic Mind, Arc Soul, Spark of Ions, Magnitude, Discharge and Shock. Arc ability or Jolt final blows increase the recharge rate of your arc abilities. Use a primary with Volt Shot like the Iclose SMG or Brigand's Law to take advantage of this armor perk. You can also extend the duration of Storm Trance by getting kills, but I used Chaos Reach since it's way better. Eye of Another World was a bit of a tricky one to do because it's the very definition of a neutral exotic. It boosts your grenade, melee and class ability regen, which is nice but nothing special. In the end I went with Strand for more arcane needles and threadling grenades. We've got Weaver Weaver's Call and Mindspun Invocation, alongside Thread of Generation, Warding, Evolution, and Propagation. Your abilities come back slightly faster when using Eye of Another World, which benefits Strand quite nicely. You can gain Unraveling Rounds through Thread of Propagation too. Nezarax Sin. Isn't he the guy that, like, whispered or something? Void. Chaos Reach, Feed the Void. Instability, Remnants, Undermining, Persistence. Make sure you're using a Void weapon to proc the increased ability regen from Nezarek's Sin. Having so many abilities all the time allows for great ad clear and easy activation of Devour. The Stag. Stasis, Ice Flare Bolts, Bleak Watcher. Torment, Durance, Chains, Fissures. Honestly, a pretty underrated exotic. In Harder Nightfalls, the added damage resistance for you and your teammates can be extremely useful. Plus you've got turrets, which are always useful. Verity's Brow, Solar, Icarus Dash, Touch of Flame, Resolve, Tempering, Mercy, Imperium. Final blows with a damage type matching your subclass grant grenade energy and stacks of death throws, which increase your grenade damage. With max stacks, your fusion grenades turn into handheld atomic bombs. <laughs> the amount of damage you can output is absolutely ridiculous. If you have a teammate running this helmet too, you both get increased grenade regen off of each other so you can keep chaining grenades infinitely. Well, until the death throws expire. Apotheosis Veil. I've gone with Strand, since Needlestorm is a burst super. Use the Threadling grenades alongside the Wanderer and Weaver's Cool aspects with Ascent, Generation, Evolution, and Continuity. Popping your super will regen your health as well as your melee, rift, and grenade energy, which can be quite nice during the wacky Thread of Ascent reload spam Strand Warlock thing. Basically, you throw Threadling grenades to reload your rocket and deal damage to refund your grenade. There are better pairings for this combo though. Astrocyte Verse, Void. Since this exotic doesn't really do a lot, we're focusing on a unique, fun warlock build rather than a particularly good one. Aspects are Chaos Accelerant and Child of the Old Gods. Instability, Cessation, Expulsion, Starvation. With this helmet, Blink travels further and recharges more quickly. Blink can be a fun little gimmick, but it definitely takes some getting used to. We're using Nova Warp for some ad clear cessation and instability for volatile rounds, and most importantly, magnetic grenades to take advantage of handheld supernova. It's a surprisingly fun build, I would highly recommend. Felwinter's Helm, Void, Chaos Accelerant, Child of the Old Gods, Cessation, Obscurity, Undermining, Starvation. Finish an enemy to create a weakening burst around you, make nearby enemies volatile and go invisible. You can use this with Collective Obligation to leech the debuffs from targets so you can reuse them. You've also got Chaos Accelerant plus Undermining for very powerful weakening Vortex grenades. Dawn Chorus, Solar, Heat Rises, Touch of Flame, Mercy, Searing, Ashes, Combustion. Your Dawnblade Super Projectiles deal increased damage and Scorch targets. When your Scorch deals damage, you gain melee energy. When you damage a Scorched enemy, you also gain melee energy. What's melee energy have to do with a Super build? No clue, but it's nice being able to spam the snap melee. Fallen Sunstar, Arc, Arc Soul, Electrostatic Mind, Discharge, Shock, Magnitude, Beacons. Pair this with Cold Heart to be generating more Ionic Traces. Since we're using this helmet, our Ionic Traces are buffed, meaning they grant additional ability energy. This additional energy is quite substantial, meaning you can spam a silly amount of grenades and melees. Furthermore, using a Trace Rifle also means we can blind targets after getting a kill. Cenotaph Mask, <laughs> why is this helmet so long? We don't question it. 
Solar, Icarus Dash, Touch of Flame, Torches, Solace, Benevolence, Resolve. Throw on Divinity to use this as a support build inside high-end Nightfalls. Switch some of the fragments and aspects around for use and everything else. Damaging bosses or mini-bosses with a trace rifle will mark them. When your allies defeat these targets, they'll gain heavy ammo while you gain special. You've also got Ember of Torches for Radiant and Benevolence for increased ability regen. Oh, and trace rifles auto-reload too. It's quite nice. Sun Bracers, Solar, Heat Rises, Touch of Flame, Ashes, Resolve, Empyrean, Solace. Get a kill with your Snap to grant unlimited solar grenades for a period of time. These grenades also last longer thanks to Touch of Flame. If you activate Heat Rises, Phoenix dive into the ground and immediately get a kill with a solar weapon, you have a times 2 restoration buff which you can keep active provided you keep getting kills with your solar weapons or abilities. Kills while in the air will extend Heat Rises and grant melee energy, allowing you to keep spamming grenades. Karnstein Armlets, Stasis. Think of this as a ice vampire build thing. Frost Pulse Ice Flare Bolts. Fissures, Fractures, Torments, Refraction. Throwing down your Rift in front of enemies will freeze them. You can then melee attack them to regen your health and send out the Ice Flare Bolts, which freeze more stuff, allowing you to kill more stuff with your melee. Not particularly viable in Nightfalls or anything, but it's a super unique build. Winter's Guile. Solar. Yep, Winter's Guile, and we're using it on the hot subclass. Heat Rises, Touch of Flame. Ashes, Solace, Eruption, Torches. Melee kills will increase your melee damage for a period of time. Using Incinerator Snap as your melee, we can proc all the way up to 5 stacks of Warlord Sigil on a single melee activation, plus igniting enemies too. Procking Heat Rises will give us melee energy when getting kills in the air, which can allow you to spam your melee even more often. Phoenix Dive while Heat Rises is active to proc Restoration times too. Aeon Soul. I would try using Sector Vigor or Force for this build, but they're just both really boring. Solar, again. Icarus Dash, Touch of Flame. Torches, Singeing, Mercy, Tempering. Aeons can give your allies ammo. Healing Grenade and Mercy can give your allies restoration. Torches gives your allies radiant. Tempering can give your allies recovery. Singeing gives you rift energy. It's a pretty useful support build, but you're better off running Aeons on Hunter, IMO. Aphidian Aspect, a pretty neutral exotic here, so I'll pair it with a very versatile build. Void, Chaos Accelerant, Feed the Void. Vigilance, Remnants, Persistence, Instability. Void is arguably the best subclass without any exotics to buff it up, so using Aphidians to increase our reload speed is just a nice bonus. Realistically, you could switch this out with Nezarek Sin or Controverse Hold, but I find the max out reload speed is super satisfying. Claws of Ahamkara, Strand, The Wanderer, Mindspun Invocation, Continuity, Generation, Warding, Fury. With this exotic, you gain an extra Strand melee charge, meaning you pretty much never run out. You also create orbs of power on a melee kill, which actually stacks with the heavy-handed mod on your class item. Consuming your Shackle Grenade also grants Weaver's Trance, so you could opt for grenade mods on your legs instead. Controverse Hold, Void, Chaos Accelerant, Feed the Void, Remnants, Undermining, Instability, Expulsion. We're going all out on grenades with this build. Controverse Hold allows your grenades to regenerate energy on a hit. With Echo of Remnants and by charging with Chaos Accelerant, our Vortex grenades can do a lot of hits, refunding a good chunk of your grenade, if not all of it. Getaway Artist, Arc, Electrostatic Mind, Arc Soul, run Flashbang Grenade for the shortest cooldown. Resistance, Discharge, Amplitude, Focus. Consume your Arc Grenade to become amplified and create an Arc Soul that lasts for 20 seconds. To refresh this Arc Soul, either consume another grenade or put down your Rift. Doing this allows you to keep up your Arc Soul pretty much indefinitely. Does it do a lot of damage? No. Is it a fun build though? Yeah, kinda. Necrotic Grip, Strand, The Wanderer, Mindspun Invocation. Mind, Warding, Generation, Continuity. Consume your Shackle Grenade to activate Weaver's Trance, during which every kill you get will suspend enemies around them. You can use this with Osteostriga and Necrotic Grips to poison enemies and create massive death chain explosions that wipe out entire rooms. I've got an in-depth showcase of a very similar build in a recent-ish video, just swap Weaver's Call for Wanderer. Nothing Manacles, Void, Child of the Old Gods, Feed the Void, Exchange, Persistence, Instability, Expulsion. Your Scatter Grenades auto-track to targets. You also gain a second Scatter Grenade charge. Reason we aren't running Chaos Accelerant here is because it just adds tracking, which we already have thanks to the gauntlets. Run this build with the Demolitionist weapon to keep up your grenades. This can be pretty fun, but Scatter Grenades are very weak in PvE, unfortunately. I'm doing about the same damage with a Waveframe Grenade Launcher, so make of that what you will. 
Osmiomancy Gauntlets, Stasis, Ice Flare Bolts, Bleak Watcher, Torment, Fissures, Hedrons, Chains. With this armor piece equipped, we gain two Cold Snap Grenade charges. When you directly freeze targets with your Cold Snap Grenade, you gain energy back. This can be useful when there are large groups of enemies close together. However, when enemies are more spaced apart, like in Nightfalls, you should be charging your grenade for a stasis turret. I'd argue this is the best stasis build in the game across all three characters. Balladors Wrathweavers, Stasis, again. Ice Flare Bolts, Bleak Watcher, again. Torment, Bonds, Durance, Fissures. Your Bleak Watcher turrets can freeze enemies, which you can then shatter to gain lots of super energy thanks to Whisper of Bonds. With your super active, the Shockwave Shatter left click ability thing does substantially more damage than it otherwise would thanks to our gauntlets, making this a somewhat viable option for DPS phases that doesn't involve any super complicated damage swap strategies. Alternatively, you can use the previous build with Osmio gauntlets and then switch to this when you have your super. Starfire Protocol. <laughs> what a relic of the past this one is. Solar. Icarus Dash Touch of Flame. Ember of Resolve, Torches, Blistering, and Ashes. If you somehow don't know how Starfire works, you gain two fusion grenade charges, which recharge when you deal weapon damage when standing in an empowering rift or well. Fusion grenade kills will also give rift energy. The reason why this thing struggles these days is because the energy you get back is very minimal. It went from around 20% per hit to 3% per hit. Don't quote me on that. Despite this, it can still be a fun build to go back to every now and then. Wings of Sacred Dawn, Solar, Icarus Dash, Heat Rises, Ashes, Tempering, Mercy, Singeing. I enjoyed using Sunshot with this exotic, so I made a Warlock build specifically based around that. Proc Heat Rises and float above the enemies, ADS to float even longer. Get kills while in midair to extend Heat Rises, generate class ability energy, and create restoration fire sprites. Unfortunately, the exotic doesn't really do much here though. Vesper of Radius. This one got buffed recently, so it's actually pretty interesting. Arc. Arc Soul, Electrostatic Mind. Shock, Magnitude, Ions, Instinct. Your Rift releases Arc shockwaves that blind nearby targets. When you're surrounded by enemies, your Rift recharges quicker. The general loop of this build consists of rushing into a group of enemies and putting down your Rift, which then blinds and eventually kills said group of enemies. Our Pulse Grenades are also super buffed up and generate us lots of Ionic Traces to get our Rift back if there isn't quite enough enemies nearby. Sanjuine Alchemy, Solar, Icarus Dash, Touch of Flame, Mercy, Tempering, Solace, Torches. This chess piece gives you a damage bonus to weapons matching your subclass element equivalent to two Surge mods when standing in your Rift. Problem is, this doesn't stack with Surge mods. However, having this intrinsic bonus can make room for kinetic Surge mods instead, which can benefit in Izanagi's Burden or Wither Horde should you be using those. I still don't think this is an entirely necessary exotic though. Chromatic Fire, Arc, Lightning Surge, Electrostatic Mind, Beacons, Shock, Magnitude, Brilliance. Precision final blows with a kinetic weapon blind targets around them thanks to Chromatic Fire. Defeating these blinded targets will release a larger blinding explosion courtesy of Spark of Brilliance. With this build I liked using a pulse rifle such as Revision Zero or Outbreak Perfected. Phoenix Protocol, Solar, Icarus Dash, Touch of Flame, Ember of Torches, Benevolence, Mercy, and Singeing. This is a pretty solid Nightfall build. Kills and assists while standing in your Well of Radiance give you super energy back, increased ability regen when using your melee ability to make allies radiant, uh, not too much else to say here. Stormdancer's Brace, Arc, Electrostatic Mind, Arc Soul. If in doubt, do a grenade build. Spark of Resistance, Magnitude, Shock, and Instinct. Ashes to assets on your helmet for super energy. When you use your Storm Trance Super, defeating targets will increase its damage and refund super energy when the super ends. I can consistently get around 50% of my energy back, which actually surprised me a little bit. If you run this build with bad juju, you're getting your super back ridiculously fast. I'd give it a try. Mantle of Battle Harmony. Honestly, a very underrated exotic. Void. Chaos Accelerant, Feed the Void. Reprisal, Remnants, Persistence, Instability. This exotic gives you super energy on kills with weapons matching your subclass damage type. When your super energy is full, you gain a damage boost for void weapons on a kill instead. We're pairing this with Void for quick recharge on Nova Bombs, but really you can do any subclass. Transversive Steps. Arc. Lightning Surge, Electrostatic Mind. Discharge, Haste, Shock, Magnitude. I feel I'm always using Shock and Magnitude, they're just too good. 
Sprinting will reload your equipped weapon after a certain amount of time. This pairs very nicely with Centrifuge, which builds a charge when sprinting, sliding, and firing the weapon that makes it more powerful. Sprinting will gradually reload the weapon as is, however pairing this with transversive steps makes this much quicker and much more usable. Lunafaction Boots, Solo, Icarus Dash Touch of Flame, Mercy, Tempering, Torches, Benevolence. When standing in a well, you and your allies gain substantially increased reload speed and range. I always notice when one of my raid teammates is using this because it makes DPS a lot more satisfying. Geomag Stabilizers, Arc, Arc Soul, Electrostatic Mind, Magnitude, Shock, Resistance, Discharge. I've gone with a fairly average Arc build here, but where the Geomags come into play is the Super. Dealing damage with Chaos Reach can extend its duration, which can give it some very solid burst damage. Promethean Spur, Solar, Icarus Dash, Touch of Flame, Singeing, Torches, Benevolence, Ashes. When standing in a rift, solar weapon final blows give you a little bit of rift energy. Killing an enemy when your rift is fully charged consumes your rift and generates one at the target's location. Using this with Tommy's matchbook was quite interesting, but other than that, a pretty underwhelming exotic that couldn't really be saved by a build. Boots of the Assembler, Strand, hear me out. Weaver's Call, Mindspun Invocation, Ascent, Generation, Evolution, Warding. These exotic boots make your empowering rift spawn Seekers, the same Seekers you generate with Lumina. These give you and your teammates a 35% damage boost for a short duration. Alongside this you have Thread of Ascent and Thread of Generation to constantly throw grenades, allowing you to reload your weapon instantly. Two issues with this build though. Firstly, your allies cannot be inside your rift if you want the Seekers to track them. Secondly, the damage buff just doesn't seem to work. That said, you can still use your rift to generate generate a noble round for Lumina and use that on your teammates, but for now I'd steer clear of this exotic unless there's something I'm missing, which may be the case. Secant Filaments, Void, Chaos Accelerant, Child of the Old Gods, Remnants, Obscurity, Undermining, Harvest. Standing in your rift gives your weapons overload capabilities. If you're on Void, which we are, it will also grant Devour, so no need for Feed the Void or Echo of Starvation. It's also got Vortex Grenades yet again because they are by far the best Void grenade in the game, especially on Warlock. Reign of Fire, Solar, Icarus Dash, Touch of Flame, Tempering, Mercy, Solace, Imperium. Final blows with the fusion rifle make you radiant. We pair this with Vex Mythoclast, which is a primary ammo fusion rifle. Additionally, using Icarus Dash will refund your equipped weapon, which can net you some pretty substantial DPS. Honestly, one of my favourite builds in the game, since I don't often get to use Vex Mythoclast. Swarmers, Strand, Weaver's Call, Mindspun Invocation, Rebirth, Evolution, Finality, Continuity. Threadlings spawn from Tangles and unravel targets they damage. We spawn copious amounts of Threadlings through our Rift, our Finishers, destroying a Tangle, consuming our Grenade, throwing our Grenade, and from kills if a Strand weapon is being used. The Threadlings are also buffed due to Thread of Evolution, so they can do some pretty decent ad clear too. Alternatively, you can use these boots for the Strand DPS rotation too, just swap out Finality and Continuity for Ascent and Generation. That is all the Warlock exotics covered, Titans are up next. Subscribe and stuff, I don't know.